Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology forecast for the week between October 27th and November 3rd, 2018. What a time, you know? It feels like there's something magical in it. That manifestation that we can feel. Right, Georgia? You feel it as well? You do. In which field of your life? You know, people are missing you. They didn't see you in videos for a long time. I told them that as winter is coming, you'll be drawing in to the view of the camera. Right now, you're basking in the sun. You and not me. I'm working here. Doing my chores. Anyway, so, more satisfaction in life. Where was I when Georgia interrupted? So, yes. This is a time of revelations. This is a time of magic. This is a time that we can actually gain new perspectives that allow us to see that we're stronger and better and things that we were not satisfied with in our life. It could be any kind of relationship. It could be the relationship with ourselves or our relationship with money and matter or our body or our health. Depends how that Venus, Uranus opposition and the Venus retrograde hits your personal chart and your personal planets. We're having two trines this week, a water trine and then on Friday an earth trine. This week has great potential for healing and for a feeling of calming down and settling down into something new the molding of a new shape in our life actually understanding that our efforts have fruited that we have surpassed that we have leaped over that we have achieved success over tremendous limitations in our lives that have constricted us and gave us a feeling of dissatisfaction in certain matters of our life and now even though we, f we thought that we are small and problematic in that area, that we cannot do any better, we find that by pushing forward, we can actually be who we dream to be. Better than we thought we are. Stronger, more apt to enjoy the fullness of the fruits of that labor in our life. And that dear friends is very very um it makes me happy okay it's joyful and do not underestimate the, the the power of this time to create that magical influence of your life of a healing of a weight being lifted and if we're talking about the transits this week we're having of course the uh, uh, Venus Uranus opposition squaring the nodes this is a time of awakening Uranus calls us to awaken and and walk forwards and the changes could be fast lightning fast and out of the blue and we have to keep a very vigilant on the one hand and f a vigilant eye and a flexible mind and know how to adapt to the changes in our life. Understand that they are there. That that instability is there. Not just for the sake of fluctuation, but for the sake of an upgrade. Of a betterment. Of a recalibration of something that went astray in our life. That is no longer speaking the language of our unique individuality. Do not give up right now. This is the time to keep on the good work, to understand that the blooming of change is here. And right now, we need to strengthen those roots so that the fruits would be sweeter. So do not stop your good work now. Allow that healing to take place. Allow those revelations to take hold in your reality and change paradigms and ideas you had about yourself or your life or your relationships 
or whatever with new ones that provide better satisfaction, enlightenment, and growth in your life. This is a time that we need to leave behind and purify, walk away from so many um, patterns in our behavior, in our relationships, and uh, in our approach to our body and to life and to money. It's a great cleansing. It's about understanding what is not efficient for us anymore. And many times it can involve a time in which we are actually parting from physical places and people and, and subjects in our lives that have outlived their usefulness. And of course, stepping into new grounds. We are having also the Mercury Jupiter conjunction this week and that conjunction happens in exact trine to Chiron so if we're talking about these two this this Mercury Jupiter couple and Scorpio we're talking about the planet of information the planet of thoughts and words and navigation through this life and we're talking about the planet of revelations of opening up to new ideas and new wisdoms to new horizons that have uh, 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 widened our scope that allowed us to have a much more comparative view a bird's eye view of things that were so subjective in our lives before it's a new level and of course they are in Scorpio it's about diving into those abysses but diving in with a great light full of energy full of positivity full of optimism full of strength Jupiter is the great benefit, benefactor. It's the great uh, um, light. And it dives into that scorpionic thought of Mercury. And it uncovers those patterns, those patterns that were there from an early age in which you were hurt and provided you with a wonderful pattern, post-traumatic tra uh, traumatic pattern that has continued to affect and constrict your relationships. Your relationships with money, with yourself, with your body, with your health, with your friends, with your love, with your parents, with your children. And by uncovering what has been darkened for so many years, consciousness sips in and there is this what they call tropical cascading into all the different parts of our system and our life. And suddenly new opportunities, we change and new opportunities open up in our future. Our present evolves and so we evolve as our understanding sips in. So really this is a time that can provide great healing if we are brave enough to look down our own sewage, so to speak, you know, and reach down into that stench and darkness and make sure that we can take out that whatever's plugging the drain, you know, and dispose of it. Hopefully, recycle it somewhere else in our life, but dispose of it and let all that emotional sewage walk away from our lives and feel liberated liberated that we finally know that we are better than who we thought we are that we have overcome that turbulation that we now are much more aware of why we did things the way we did before and why the questions were raised but now now we are sure. Now, now we know our next step. And that's something that, as I said, makes me smile and can give you great power to achieve things in your life. So let's go down to the weekdays and see how these work around the days of the week. So on the 27th, it's a Saturday. Remember, I'm talking in Central European time. So if you're in the United States, 
seven to ten hours back if you're in the Pacific Australia New Zealand it's about ten hours ahead if I'm not mistaken ten or nine so Saturday itself from the night time is a little lethargic it's better for a movie or watching television or listening to some good music not so much of an active time it's a bit sensitive to Sunday however is very energetic in the morning time it's great for physical activity it's great for taking your targets forward it's actually good for work it's actually good for career matters uh, even though it's a Sunday and there's a lot of fast moving information on that day that we are energetic enough energetic enough to actually juggle and move through on Monday the 29th uh, it's a, you know this should have been the Sunday because this is a day that we could feel that we don't want all that responsibility on our head we don't want to do all these chores we just want to enjoy ourselves a little bit a little stay a little in bed you know ah i want to have that bre late breakfast i didn't get on sunday because i was too busy exercising but we have to get up we have to do our things we have to go on through the week and even though it is a working day it could be a day that we enjoy enjoy ourselves very much it's a great day to be in the company of others it's a great day for satisfaction and money it's a good day to step out of the ordinary but there's also a opposition between an opposition between the moon and Saturn in the a.m. in the morning so we are prone to judging others or ourselves too much to losing faith in our abilities and to be too much of 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 um you know do not feed your negative wolf as they say on monday morning this is a time to keep your positivity even though if in the morning it it looks a little cloudy the sky looks a little cloudy but you know by noon time the conjunction between mercury and jupiter is exact this is a great time for business deals this is a great time to sign contracts this is a time that our minds are usually brilliant. It's a good time to, you know, to think ahead, to process thoughts, to understand and have revelations, to plan ahead. And on the 30th, that's the Tuesday, we're having the exact opposition between Uranus and, and Venus squaring the nodes. On that day, we are having the moon opposing Pluto exactly as well and an exact trine between that Mercury uh, Jupiter conjunct to Chiron I want to talk about that trine to Chiron a minute because if we're talking about revelations when we talked about that couple that Mercury Jupiter about understanding who we are when we connect it in such a beneficial way in a Jupiterian way I see a, a trine is a Jupiterian aspect when we connect it to it in a, a Jupiterian way in a beneficial way to Chiron to a place so karmatic a place in which it, it, it entwines within it the hurts and the sensitivities that we carry within us from our childhood if not from the past life this is a time that we can actually heal who we are and the pains that we've had for so long it's not that we're saying goodbye to that issue no but we can actually provide a great healing to ourselves and I'm talking about emotional healing I'm talking about spiritual healing I'm talking about the healing of the feminine within us <clears throat> so that's the 30th and the 30th it's a good day to actually go outside be in nature meditate do something artistic musical dance whatever you know but ignite that femininity that sacred femininity within you don't allow yourself to be too obsessive to go into the negativity or the dark thoughts as I said we have to be full of positivity if we are to plunge into darkness because if not 
we will be lost. We have to remind ourselves that our only reason to put our hands down there, to dive into that, is to actually come back up breathing, you know, <coughs> and safe. So the 31st, it's a Wednesday, we're having the Grand Water Trine between the Moon in Cancer, Jupiter in Scorpio, Chiron in Pisces. Um, if we want to go even into a deeper level, it's not only a grand trine, it's actually a kite because Juno is facing Mercury on the two and the on the other end. So this is a great time. As I said, we could, I mean, a kite is a wonderful, we all know about the grand trine. It's mystical. It has, it's, it's a time in which our, um, let's say, ancestors, guides, or, or higher mind, our super consciousness, and Uranus is about super consciousness as well. I've heard an astrologer I love very much and adore, um, uh, Kaipacha, talk about Uranus and talk about these times. And I all, uh, um, you know, I advise you to listen to Kaipacha. I love his, uh, his uh, um, astrology for the soul reports, Pele reports. And he was talking about Uranus as something coming out from the unconscious. Here I have to disagree. I don't think that Uranus is an unconscious planet. <coughs> I, am, I can see Pluto as unconscious. I can see Neptune as unconscious. But when I see Uranus, I see super consciousness. I see something coming up uh, in from above, not coming up from below, which is the unconscious process coming up to our consciousness. Here we're talking about a download. <laughs> We're talking about new themes, new ideas, new ways, opening up our boxes to something that is higher, to an understanding that was always there in a sense. It's not that we were unconscious to it. We knew about it. It was in the atmosphere around us, but we've never felt individually connected to those ideas to that reality, to that understanding. And now we understand. My God, I thought I was complete shit with relationships. But I've been really working on myself for the past six months. And you know what? My girlfriend and me are happier than we've ever been. I've never thought that I could have such a stable relationship. And I have this epiphany, you know? that I'm not the man I thought I was. That I'm not the lady I thought I was when it comes to, um, I don't know, my work. That I'm not the guy I thought I was when it comes to my studies. Or to the food I eat. And so on and so forth. So this is a time of revelations. And you better believe it, Mama. You better believe that you can be better than how you see yourself in the mirror and or who's going to be your doctor? I mean, if the patient wants to continue to be sick and disabled, who could heal it? You know, and that reminds me of a story. That reminds me of a story about a faith healer. A faith healer, you know, Bible Belt, Midwest. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, rise up and stand kind of man. And when he was asked, Sir, how do you raise people from their crutches? How do you make them walk? He said, well, it's very simple. All I do is have my um, guides or angels or, or, or souls that are around us, whatever you want to see them, however you want to see them or call them. So he said, I, I, only, I ask my guides that my, or my guides show me who is already healthy in the crowd but has not yet reached that realization and in a way is carrying that disability with him or with her throughout their life. And all I do, he said, is give them the ability to release themselves from that previous stage because physically they don't have to be there anymore. It's only in here that they're still stuck. And you know, I loved that answer. I really did. You know, and it, it brought me a lot of appreciation towards that. And it showed me that he does it from a sincere place as well. So, please, 
believe in the power of healing in your life. The 30th, as I said, we're having that uh, square and the moon is opposing Pluto. So really, the, you, you can plunge into darkness that day. You can become obsessive. You can become uh, um, too extreme for your own good. So don't, you know. Remember, again, we have to moderate things, especially on the 30th. The 31st is the grand water trine it's much more settling down already it's that kite with juno and mercury it's a great time to put more attention in our primary relationship and the things we are married to or the people we are married to in our lives and walk over obstacles or heighten the harmony however you want to see it in those places and really, this is not the time to give up, as I said, and uh, walk away from the patterns that you don't need. From Wednesday afternoon onwards through Tuesday and Friday, it's a great time for business. It's a great time for establishing something grand, something beautiful, something honorable, something that has a lot of heart. The moon and Regulus are conjunct, and you know, the, the saying goes that you have to be very sincere and you have to make sure that whatever you are doing has a value for the greater group as well if you do these things at that time then great success is promised but if you are not sincere you will fall from your grace into calamity so um, or if you're too too proud Thursday we could be too aggressive we could have a male energy within us that is not um, in equilibrium watch that uh, it could be a proud day we could be too fussy about honor and prestige and our status so just watch that and watch other people in our surroundings as well and if they are like that with you don't fall into that little game Friday the 2nd of November it's actually a good day for business and career and taking things forward. It is the day of the grand earth prime between the moon in uh, Virgo and Saturn in uh, um, Capricorn and Uranus in Taurus. It's a great time to deepen our roots, to know what is really sacred and important in our life. And if these are new subjects that we are just recalibrating and bringing into our lives, this is a good time to, you know, strengthen this, the ground around them so they could start deepening their roots in our lives. It's a time that we could feel a great settling down, that we can feel some kind of tranquility coming down. It is a time that we need to be aware not to ask for too much, not to jump too high too soon, not to be overindulgent. Other than that, it's a beautiful time. And, and, and also the moon sextiles Venus on that day. We can enjoy ourselves that Friday. Um, and on the third, Saturday, great time to be outside or go out to nature. It's a good time to, for pastimes that are more passive or artistic. But again, we have a Neptunian aspect that makes us a little lethargic and sensitive on that day. Um, but generally a good day and from the afternoon onwards it becomes much more energetic. This is already a good time to go into deep matters and to uh, um, things that do not scratch the surface alone. Could have a psychological aspect that Saturday the 3rd on the afternoon. Listen, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm really thankful for any comment that you do on the video or any share that you do or like because these comments and shares really help this video get exposed to more people. If it helped you, then please let it ha help other people as well. And in the next few days, we're going to put up exact dates uh, for all the new groups so you could sign up automatically. We're just transferring the site to be automated instead of me having to call up people all around the world and schedule things with them, which I I just don't get to do and, and then the groups don't open and everything is postponed. But now finally I have a, a, a student of mine working with me. Her name is Zina, Zina Milstein. And uh, 
she's a great mystic herself and we work together and she's helping me actually automate everything so people can enroll online and I don't have to do it all alone. So that's it for today. I want to thank you for listening. May it be a wonderful healing, strengthening, empowering time for you, for us, for everybody. May we heal ourselves and heal the world. May we be born into this Aquarian age with great light and fortitude. Amen. Have a beautiful week. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Live long, prosper.